Okay, so now we're up to section four of the syllabus, which is the light signal reaching the retina is transformed into an electrical impulse. Up until now, we've been looking at how light waves get to the retina at the back of the eye. Once the eye has focused light on the retina, the light signal is transformed into an electrochemical impulse, which is carried by the optic nerve to the brain. Or more simply, one could say that the patterns of light that land on the retina are converted into nerve signals, which the brain interprets as a picture. This process takes place in several steps as outlined here. First, the light image strikes the retina, which is at the very back of the eye. Photosensitive pigments in the rods and cones then absorb the light. A photochemical change in the rods and cones involving what are known as visual pigment, pigment sorry, generate an electrical impulse. The electrical impulse is transmitted to bipolar cells in the retina. The bipolar cells then stimulate other cells known as ganglion cells whose processes or axons make up the optic nerve. And lastly, the fibers of the optic nerve carry the partly processed information to the brain where it is then interpreted and created into an image. So the first dot point we're going to look at says, identify photoreceptor cells as those containing light sensitive pigments and explain that these convert light images into electrochemical signals that the brain can interpret. So the retina is the innermost coating of the eye it is a thin sheet about one tenth of a millimetre thick. It consists of several layers of nerve cells, one of which is the layer of visual receptors known as the rods and cones. Of all the nerve cells that make up the retina, only the rods and cones respond directly to light, hence the collective term photoreceptors. In humans, each retina contains approximately 125 million rods and six to seven million cones. There are many layers of nerve cells in the retina and they are arranged back to front compared with what one would expect. The rods and cones, which are sensitive to light, are the last layer that the light reaches. So the light coming into the eye passes through the entire retina before striking the rods and cones, which are situated closest to the choroid layer. The photoreceptors then generate impulses which travel back along the various neuron layers of the retina to the optic nerve which carries the signals to the brain. There are five main layers of nerve cells or neurons that are directly involved in the transmission of impulses to the retina. So we have the photoreceptor cells, which are made up of the rods and cones, the bipolar cell layer, and the ganglion cell layer, as well as two other layers known as the associated horizontal and am amacrine cells. Oops, sorry. Okay, so light images turn into electrochemical signals. In order, to this, um, in order for this to happen, the light has to hit the photoreceptor cell layer at the back of the retina. The rods and cones, when stimulated by light, perform three main functions. Firstly, they absorb the light energy, which involves the visual pigments. They then convert this light energy into electrochemical energy, generating a nerve impulse and then they transmit this nerve impulse towards the bipolar cells of the retina. The bipolar cell layer then um, sorry, receives the electrochemical signals from the rods and cones and transmits it, the signal from the photoreceptors to the next layer of cells, the ganglion cells. So the bipolar cells are sort of an intermediate between the rods and cones and the ganglion cells. The ganglion cell layer, in this layer, uh, the cells receive electrochemical signals from the bipolar cells. The distal end of the ganglion layer is extended into long processes that go on to form the fibers of the optic nerve. So as we can see here, the distal end is the furthest end, distant, and all of these distal parts of all of these ganglion cells converge to form the optic nerve. These neurons are responsible for carrying electrochemical signals from the retina all the way to the brain. We also have associated nerve cell layers, which we don't really need to know too much about, but they are the horizontal cells, which occur at the junction between the photoreceptor cells and the bipolar cells. These connect one group of rod and cone cells with another and then link them to the bipolar cells. Amacrine cells occur at the junction between the bipolar cells and the ganglion cells, which would be here. Studies suggest that horizontal cells and amacrine cells are involved in processing or summarizing incoming visual information. 
So once the, the information or the light gets to the retina, we then need to be able to interpret it. So although some information is processed in the retina, most of the interpretation of any visual stimulus that enters our eye occurs in the brain. It is based on variables such as the following. So firstly, how strong the light is, how many rods and cones are stimulated, and in that comes in when we're looking at um, how we perceive colour, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. Contrast enhancement, so being able to detect, to detect shadows, recognition of horizontal, vertical and diagonal lines, the combination of cone stimulated leading to colour detection, which I said earlier, and the differences in the image that falls on the retina of the left and the right eye, which goes back to having a look at depth perception that we looked at earlier. So the next stop point that we need to look at is describe the differences in distribution, structure and function of the photoreceptor cells in the eye. So there's three things that we need to look at here for both of the types of photoreceptors. So we're going to start by looking at structure as that's probably the easiest to be able to visually see. So both rods and cones, as we can see here, rods on this side and cones over here, are elongated cells that contain an outer segment, which is closest to the choroid layer of the eye, that is joined to an inner segment that leads to the conducting part of the cell. The conducting part of the cell composes of a cell body containing a nucleus and, in, and an extension or a process called the foot. The process then conducts impulses to the next layer of neurons in the retina, which as we now know, is the bipolar layer. Rods and cones are named after the shape of their outer segments. As we can see in the image, in the rods, this segment is long and narrow. And in comparison, the cones tend to have a shorter outer segment that is conical in shape, hence the name cones. Rods and cones contain visual pigment, which is a chemical substance that absorbs light energy. These pigments, sometimes collectively termed visual purple, are stacked in layers, as we can see in the image here, of flattened membranes in the outer segment of each photoreceptor. Rhodopsin is the only pigment present in rods, which is easy to remember, rhodopsin rods, whereas cones contain what are known as iodopsins. And there are three different types of iodopsin, one found in each type of cone cell. Each type is sensitive to a different wavelength of light, being red, green, or blue. The cone cells are therefore responsible for color vision, while the rods can only allow us to see black and white. The role of the visual pigments is to absorb the light, which the rod, cone or, sorry, the rod or cone cell will then convert into an electrochemical signal that the brain can interpret. We'll be looking closer at the different pigments a little bit later. So now let's move on and have a look at the distribution and the function of the different types of photoreceptors. As we can see in this graph, rods which are represented by the blue line are evenly distributed across most of the retina, but are, pres uh, sorry, are absent in the point of central vision known as the fovea, which is this bit here. As we can see, we have zero of our rods. As a result, rods are responsible for most peripheral vision, including the detection of movement. Rods are not very tightly packed in the retina and many rods may connect with one bipolar neuron. This retinal convergence results in the rods having poor visual acuity. So our rods don't actually allow us to see very clearly. Rods are extremely sensitive to light, responding best to low light intensities. They can be stimulated, which is also sometimes referred to as bleached, by a small quantity of light. The pigment can also be rapidly regenerated. The resulting sensitivity makes them able to operate well in semi-darkness, so they are used for night vision and to detect light and shadow contrasts. Cones, on the other hand, which are represented by the red line, are distributed in groups throughout the retina, but there are fewer found in the periphery, as we can see. Most of our cones are concentrated in the macula, which would be this section here. Uh, an area of the retina that gives a central 10 degrees of vision. The fovea is a small pit in the middle of the macula that contains cones only. The cones in the fovea are very densely packed and show no retinal convergence. As a result, they have a high degree of visual acuity, perceiving images central to the field of view clearly and precisely.